Hi, it's Gwen Fox and you know what? I am so happy that you're here with me. Why? Because we have fun. Plus, we learn and share at the same time. Now, a student asked me how to choose a color palette for her paintings. Like, when do you select your colors? How do you select your colors with so many to choose from? My gosh, it's enormous. These are such great questions. So number one, the first question that you need to ask yourself is, what do you want the painting to say? But what if you're like those that like to paint with nothing in mind? You just kind of go with the flow of the moment. Well, actually, it doesn't matter which way you paint or create. But a really good way to start is to select three to five colors at the very beginning. Now, black and white are free. Now, this is called a limited color palette. It's the safest way to go as well as actually the smartest because with so many colors to choose from, and we as artists, we love every one of them, it's tempting to want to use them all in a painting because they're so gorgeous. In fact, painters today have more colors to choose from than any other time in history. Now, usually what happens is when we're, when we're in, the, in the mid of a painting that isn't working, so we've just think, well, maybe it just needs another color. Now, what this does is it complicates the issue of how the painting holds together. But when you use a limited palette, you end up with all the colors in your grays and your neutral colors. And this way, the painting all develops and holds together automatically. Now, one of my favorite limited palettes is an acrylic Nicolaso Gold, Quinacridone Magenta, or Quinacridone Crimson. If you don't like pink, Crimson has more brown and phthalo turquoise. And again, black and white are free. And in the oil colors, the palette would be Indian yellow, quinacridone magenta, and phthalo turquoise. Now you will notice that in both acrylic and oil, these colors are transparent. I can make a transparent color opaque by adding black or white, but I cannot make an opaque totally transparent. I always put those transparents on first because they add a glow. Just so you know, when you see the word quinacridone or thalo, it automatically means transparent and it doesn't matter what medium you're using. But in choosing a palette, knowing what you want the painting to say at the beginning, well, it's extremely important. But now, wait a minute. Let's back up for a minute. I want you to recognize and understand when you are creating a painting, the composition suggests a feeling, and then you put the color on top of that, wham! Each color has a feeling that it projects. And you know when you put your center of interest at the top of those sweet spots of the composition, automatically it has uplifting. And when you put it at the lower part of that sweet spot, it's calmer. When you add color, you're adding another layer of feeling for that viewer to automatically receive whether they know it or not. Now, I will be happy to do a video on the meaning of all the colors if that's what you would like, but you have to tell me. So leave a comment below if you would like that. Now, I'm saying this because I want you to recognize how much power and control that you have as an artist. This is an extremely important bit of knowledge. There are several different palettes. One, the monochromatic. It is using only a dark brown or a black pigment plus white. And this allows you to focus on your shapes, degrees of light and dark, which is called values. Now I challenge you to do a white tablecloth with a white bowl filled with white eggs it will, you will grow immensely. Now, I also want to know who's willing to take up this challenge. Put the comment below. Now, there's also one that says you can have one warm and one cool pigment. This offers more versatility when you choose one warm and one cool, plus black and white. 
Good example is with burnt orange and ultramarine blue. Warm colors appear to come forward, as you know, and cool colors recede. There's also the Zorn palette. Now, Zorn was a Swedish painter during the late 19th and 20th centuries who developed color palette that bears his name. And it's known for creating rich, dark colors and beautiful grays. It's yellow ochre, vermilion, ivory black, and white. But some believes, believe that he used cadmium rather, rather than vermilion. I don't recommend you use that because vermilion is toxic. Analogous colors. Analogous color seems seem to they use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. These colors have close relationship to the others, and it makes a very beautiful painting. Then there is the complementary color palette. Now, complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. When placed in next to, to each other, they tend to vibrate. But if you choose this color palette, make sure that you have one of the colors as a dominant color and the other one as an accent. Because if you use the same amount of each, they cancel each other out. Then there's a split complementary color palette. A split complementary color scheme utilizes the base color and then two secondary colors. It's very similar to the complementary, but one of the complementaries are split. Now, this is but a start of understanding color, and let me know if you want to get more information on how to use it in your paintings. Remember, this is your channel, and I want you to post what you're interested in because guess what? You and I are a team. So, I will see you in the next video. Let me know what you want. I love you. Take care. Bye.